A few people were probably wondering what a guy was doing walking along the beach carrying a cross. After all, today is Good Friday. In this video, I tidy up a few loose ends and show some new things I've done since the last. There is a question about this blue box. All that's in it is a variable capacitor. Just about any air-spaced variable capacitor will do the trick. This is a beehive trimmer. It's in two halves, and you can see the parallel plates. As you screw it down, the capacitance increases. That's because there's more overlap between the plates. It's a similar principle with this one. A little bit higher capacitance, I think it goes up to about 100 picofarad, and it's shown here with the plates fully meshed. Again, maximum capacitance. Now, of course, you'll notice my loop has two tuning capacitors. Only one is switched in at a time. They are both 5 to 50 picofarad beehive trimmers. Now, 50 picofarads is sufficient to go down to 20 meters or 14 megahertz, but not good enough by itself for 7 megahertz or 40 meters, where you need a higher capacitance. So, what I did was I had another beehive trimmer and switched in a 100 picofarad mica fixed capacitor. That's for 40 meters only. Then there's the dimension of the loop. It's not critical. Anything that resonates with your tuning capacitor will work. In this case, it's about three meters of three core extension cable. So that makes it, well, about 80 centimeters aside. Last time I used gaffer tape to mount the small loop to the larger loop. Instead of bringing a whole reel, I'll just attach a bit to a plastic bag, like a shopping bag. And I did, but it was a pain to peel the gaffer tape off. It just stuck. I couldn't undo it and I nearly didn't get on air. It slides along the main dowling so I can still remove it when I'm packing up. And to stop it from slipping down, I've just got the coax here. That's the feed line to the transceiver. Talking about the transceiver and how to house it, the bag I was using before was too big, too heavy and too bulky. And so I went to a $2 shop last night and picked up this nice little bag here. It cost me $11. It's got several compartments, one for the radio, one for the battery. And to keep things tidy, I made a little hole between two of the compartments. You can do that with the tip of a soldering iron. You just touch it for a moment and the plastic melts away. I do that to pass the power cable through from the battery into the transceiver. Then there's the battery pack made out of two 7.2 volt remote control car battery packs. And as you can see I've gaffer taped them together. Just to keep things neat I've put them in a pencil case that can be zipped up. So the whole package is a much neater and smaller station. All good in theory, but let's get on air and give it a go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Operates on HF or shortwave radio. Yeah. Yeah. That tunes it into the right frequency, and, and with the radio, depending on the conditions, you can talk all over the world. Wow. That is awesome. Great. So, uh, yeah, I got through to South Africa last weekend, but I tried it. So, wow. yeah, I think it's working. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so, in the new invention. Heaps of people have built this before. Oh, okay. But not exactly the same as this, but this is just you know, a different version. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, awesome. yeah. Oh, okay, thank Have you. A Have a good Easter. Thanks. See ya. Is that a very strong signal? But I did get you that time. Um, uh, you're doing many as more. Mike India Kilo Echo is located just south of Perth. Um, VK3 Yankee Echo Mobile. This is VK6 Bravo Mike Romeo. Noted that you're pedestrian mobile and you're, you're, you're holding a magnetic loop um, walking along the beach. Peter until his battery uh, went on him. Well, I was hoping to give him a call. 